thousand yeah, I just uh, I thought it was a really good team win. Um, it wasn't the cleanest game. There was a lot of sloppy things there. You know, we we gave up a fake punt. <laughs> we had a call that was just designed to stop the punt. We weren't even trying to return it. Um, you know, and then we have the the sack fumble strip, and you know, it was like we were trying to leave them in the game. And and I don't know if it was our cleanest game, and and sometimes that happens uh, after a bye week. You know, we're kind of out of rhythm a little bit, and so it was it was just kind of a game that had a weird feel to it. But I thought our defense played extremely hard with great effort. Uh, I thought we got pressure on the quarterback. Uh, there was times they they got guys open, but the quarterback really wasn't able to set his feet, and uh, you know, so I thought we made him a little bit uncomfortable there. Uh, and then offensively, you know, I think we made enough explosive plays and we threw the ball really well. The nature of what they do on defense, it's really, really hard to run the football against them um, when they play all the single high and outnumber the box. But, you know, we threw it well. Um, our outside receivers and our slot receivers, I think, are playing extremely well. You know, the amount of contested catches that Jamal Banks is making and Donovan Green made today and, you know, some of the things after the catch uh, you know, that Atorian did. And, and I thought uh, Keyshawn and Taylor both had really strong games, um, you know, but uh, again, we were 1-0 uh, this week and it's a good ACC win. It's the first time we've ever beaten BC at home. I, I certainly give credit to, to Jeff Halfley and their staff. I think he's a heck of a coach. They had a good plan. They did all the things they had to do to try to stay in the game in terms of uh, the fake punt and taking some shots in us. Um, but it's a, it's a good win. And, and it's anytime we come off of a bye and get out of rhythm, you know, I'm a little bit tight because I just, it's been a while since we played. And again, I, I don't think it was our cleanest game. Uh, I don't think it's the best game we played, but you know, it's, it's pretty cool to be able to say that and, and still win an ACC game by 28 points. So with that, I'll open it up. I mean, kind of we're, I mean, I, th I think we're a good team and, uh, you know, uh, we, there's some games, there's very little margin for error. And, and today was a game that I think because of where we are program wise, we had a little bit of margin for error. I mean, there's games and again, they're, you know, credit BC, they're, they're playing shorthanded on the O line. That's, that's really, I've been there. <laughs> For two whole years um and, and that's hard uh and you know so i think we we had a little advantage up there and, and they've got some good young players and those guys will be fine in time just kind of like we were a little bit in 2015 but yeah i mean I, the, the whole game i didn't feel like we were playing well i didn't feel it was clean and then you look up and, and you win by 28 so that's i think that's a good problem You know, that's what's the, the beauty of you guys being in the media is that you always have this big picture perspective. And I didn't even know that until I came in here. You know, I'm just playing the next series and the, the next play, huh? Yeah, I mean, I, he's, he's a really, really good quarterback. I just think it's, you know, funny this year that uh, he, he doesn't get the credit he deserves. You know, I just even this year, uh, you know, last year he was the second team all ACC quarterback and the first team guy uh, graduated and got drafted. And, and somehow he went into the season by some people as the fifth best quarterback in the ACC. I mean, that, that's so disrespectful to what he's done and what he's accomplished. Um, you know, I, there's not another quarterback in the country I would rather have. And, you know, his level of play has been so high for so long. And I, I, you know, again, and the great beauty of Sam is he doesn't care. He just wants to win. I think it bothers me more than it bothers him. I, I think he's 
one of the very elite quarterbacks in the entire country. Um, you know, how he's not getting mentioned in the Heisman stuff and things like that is, um, again, his, look what he's done over his career and look what he's done this year. And uh, I mean, I, he's, he's, he's awesome. And he's, uh, again, the beauty of Sam is he don't even care, could care less. He just wants to win. And, and that's why he's so valuable to us. Sam has matured and grown so much that when he beats himself up, it does not last nearly as long as it used to. His ability to recover from a bad play, a bad series, you know, three years ago, if he threw a pick, I'd be worried. He's over it 30 seconds later. And so what happens the very next drive? Right down the field. So, um, yeah, I, I, again, I, and we got a lot of players like that. I and mean, we, 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 this whole narrative that we're, you know, just older and all experienced. I mean, those are good things. We we have really good football players here. So I don't, you don't win as many games as we've won the last few years here without having some really talented football players. Those guys have been awesome. I mean, anybody, any other coach that plays us, that's the first thing they talk about is those guys make everything go you know that rpo slow mesh walk it up there you know the amount of time that they have to sustain blocks that is not easy and those guys do a phenomenal job of it and you know we uh you know we run the outside zone and the pass protection and we do a lot more things in the slow mesh uh and and even guys like spencer clapper getting in there and are starting to play better so not only do we have experience and good starters we're really starting to develop some good depth there um, you know, so again, I'm sure, you know, when all of our 35 year old fifth year, you know, 15th year players graduate next year, we'll come crashing back to earth. Like everyone says we will. Um, so that'll be, you know, and, and behind those guys, we got guys that are in their third and fourth year that under normal times would be starting. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 still, it still starts with stopping the run. And, you know, we put our corners on islands a little bit there and it, it burned us once or twice. But, you know, I ju we're just playing so well up front on our defensive line. You know, Dave Cohen has done such a great job of developing depth and good players. And again, those guys, have, most of them have been developed. I mean, we have Kobe Turner, who was a transfer, but you know, Tyler Williams and Rondell and Jasheen and I mean, I, Deion Bergen. I mean, those guys have gotten better every single year and they're now, they're good ACC football players. Um, and we have a lot of them. We were all nine guys in there. Um, so we're, uh, you know, it starts with those guys, but I, I also think Coach Spencer has done a great job developing our linebackers. You know, Chase Jones has become a really good player and Smenda, has been productive for a lot of years, but the way that Dylan Hazen is coming on has really helped us. And I think Jalen Hudson and Quincy Bryan are all, stock is rising. Um, so again, we, we got some really tough games I and mean, we're gonna need all those guys. And, you know, we're heading up to Louisville next week and those guys are super talented and they have an unbelievable quarterback that can make you miss and throw the ball. and that's always a tough place to play. So, you know, there, there's no easy ones, right? Every single one of these things is going to be a, a very competitive football game, but I like our team and I like the way they prepare. And I think, you know, we'll just try to keep going here. Well, I, I think it, it starts you know, with our offensive coordinator, Warren, you know, we, we've had that really the every coach other than the tight end coach has been here for nine straight years. So everything on that side of the ball has been consistent, how we teach the zone play, how we teach progressions. And then you accumulate all those reps that those guys have accumulated and they're able to fix problems. Like uh, when you're younger, you know, this happened and, you know, the players didn't know how to react and you're on the sidelines trying to teach it. 
when you're that experienced up front and that experienced at quarterback and at receiver, <clears throat> they can fix problems on their own. And they come over and this is exactly what happened. And we're going to make this call coach. And, you know, there's just, there's the old saying, the difference sometimes between a, a good lineman and a, a great lineman is 5,000 reps. Um, and so just the whole offensive staff is consistent. The players are consistent. You know, when there's a three and out, there's not a, a panic moment of what's going on. Nobody's throwing their helmet. You know, it's just, it's very workmanlike. It's, it's, it's a very mature group. They played really well. Now the, you know, the single safety luck is hard to run. You got to be able to throw the ball against them. And so you end up running what we call a lot of horizontal stretch routes and a lot of those underneath routes that AT caught and Donovan caught. Like those are the plays you have to be able to execute against that defense. And, you know, BC had nine starters back on defense and they got a very good secondary. So, um, you know, I, I didn't think it wasn't going to be easy. And, you know, again, a lot of those catches, they weren't wide open, right? They were very tough contested catches. All right, so we'll just cut y'all off. I didn't, so be mad at him, not me. Hey, I do. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm a former basketball player, and I was good at boxing out. So, use my my big frame and and box them out, so I could had the best chance of catching the ball. What's it like working with Jake Lee and watching this person? Yeah. Um. It's a, it was a journey for sure, but uh, I came in, you know, like a sponge and, and I was ready to just, you know, soak in all that, that information, soak in all that, you know, the talent from, from the dudes who came before me. And um, same right now with AT and, and Donovan Green. I learned from every, everybody, whether you, you older and whether, whether you're younger, but um, the journey really humbled me. Um, it, it allowed me to go through, um, through struggles. Um, it allowed me to, to find things about, about myself that I didn't know. And, uh, it's, it's helped me, you know, progress and, and be who I am. Uh, honestly, I've, I've made that catch a, a bunch of times before in practice. It was honestly routine. Um, and I say that with the most, <laughs> with the most respect, so. <laughs> yeah. And I knew the ball was coming to me, too. Talk about what it was like being on the other end. Just the trust, you know. I trust him. He trusts me. He trusts. He trusts the whole receiver room, and uh, it it comes from like I said on the radio. It comes from the off season. You know, we are a product of our work, and uh, and and it's not just on the field. It's 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 in the classroom. It's in the locker room. It's it's in the houses we live in. It's, it's everywhere, and uh, and that's why you know our connections are, are so so good. Mm -hmm. I do. I think it's a legendary team, um, and and that's why we focused on that mindset. That's why every week it's it's one and zero. It's one and zero. It's one and zero. You know, we focus on the present. A lot of people get caught up in the past and the future, but um, but the uh. The paradise is, is, is in the moment, so. Honestly, it's an afterthought because we're trying to win a national championship. Uh, we're trying to win rings. That, the bowl, you know, looking forward to a bowl, it's, it's, it's been gone, you know what I'm saying? So uh, we, we set that standard, and we want to we obtain that standard and keep it. I don't think so. It's it's too many words. 
It's a real picture of a thousand words. Let's see, let me say that again. Appreciate y'all time. Oh, yeah, I mean, I think we were kind of coming off the bye. Uh, it was a big emphasis to just get going fast. And, you know, it's been the first time in two weeks you kind of get live bullets thrown at you. So I think we're all a little rusty and shaky. But, you know, it's kind of four-quarter football game, so we weren't really worried. And we've had slow starts before. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, we're not on the sideline freaking out. It's just, um, hey, do our job, settle in. You know, sometimes it takes a hit or two or, you know, a miss, a miss throw, a miss catch, whatever, to kind of settle you back in. So. Nothing too crazy. Um, I mean, I think it's uh, it's just a lot more fun when you win and you play well. I think that's a big message in our offense is, um, you know, when guys are moping around, it's like, you know, we. We play when you play well, you have fun, and um, when you execute at a high level, like we we have you know done the past couple of weeks, it's it's a lot more fun than when you when you don't. And um, it may seem obvious, but sometimes you lose sight of that and um, just kind of get caught up in the daily grind. So yeah, I think uh, you know everything kind of happens uh, in those moments, and you kind of get caught up in it. So yeah, it's it's always you know I I sit in my chair after a game and watch guys celebrate, and you know see guys like Taylor. You know, celebrate. You know, because it's been a been a while since he's caught a pass, caught a touchdown, two touchdowns, right? Um, just see the smiles on those guys' faces. It, it kind of makes it for me. So. Just a lot of a lot of really good receivers, and uh, you know, a lot of uh, great protection and running backs and the whole nine. So you know, it's um, just you know, you got to look back at my career and just first you got to thank Wake for sticking with me because I've had some bad moments, but. Um, you know, it's uh, just a lot of a lot of thank yous. I probably owe a lot of people. Um, it's cool to be a part of for sure. Um, you know, it's. Again, it's kind of trying to remind the young guys that this isn't normal or not normal, but this isn't like it's all it, it hasn't always been like this. And um, I think that uh, you take it for granted sometimes kind of goes back to your first question. It's just um, just enjoying it um, and, and realizing how lucky we are to play here and play with guys that we have and a coach and the whole coaching staff that we have. It's um, just an incredible opportunity and not, you know, you know, losing sight of that throughout the process is going to be the number one thing this year. Yeah, I mean, it makes it pr pretty easy. So that's probably why Coach forgot that I threw touchdown passes. Um, like long handoffs at this point. No, it's not that easy. But um, no, I think that that's, you know, that's that's it. I mean, that's where I tip my cap to, you know, I guess starts with Coach Higgins recruiting those guys and then those guys putting in all the work and um, Coach R putting us in those plays. And then it, up front, right, those guys got to make some big blocks, running backs, tight ends, O-line always. You know, the beat boys do a great job every week. So um, it's been, a, you know, an incredible kind of, I guess, development of what we have here. And, you know, it's really fun to be a part of. I mean, it's Wake Forest. So what do you expect, right? Um, you know, it is what it is. You kind of, you know, you see it. It's not like I'll lie to you guys. And I, I would say I'd be lying to say I don't see it. But, um, you know, it's it's one of those things where you start chasing, you know, rankings and touchdowns and rewards. And you just start missing the, the big picture and missing throws and chasing stuff that's not there, seeing ghosts, as they say. So, um, you know, I'm just, you know, focused on getting the ball to the, those guys and, um, you know, doing my job the best I can. Best attribute? Um, 
I mean, yeah, right. That hey, we're we're working on stuff nil front, some beard trimmers, beard bomb. So be in the looks for that. Um, I mean, I think they're just relentless. I think the you know, Coach Tobacco sets a standard that you know it's you know it's it's strive for perfection and and um, but I think just they're relentless. You know, they just beat people up and you know guys they're so physical and when we get in those twelve play drives, you don't see them complaining hands on hips, right? We're just rolling. Um, so I think that's it. Appreciate you guys' patience. <laughs> what are you talking about? What are you, what are you talking about? Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Deeks are six and one. That's what I'm more concerned about. It's so much fun, um, you know, just on any given day, you know, anyone can go out there and, you know, make a bunch of plays for the offense. So, you know, it's just an exciting group to be a part of. And, you know, we feed off of each other's energy. So. Um, you know, we, I'm going to give you the coach class and answer, you know, one week season, <laughs> you know, we take it one game at a time and, you know, like, like I'm sure he said, you know, it's hard to win games in the ACC and, you know, um, you know, just fortunate to be a part of such a special group and, you know, we take it one game at a time and, you know, next week we got Louisville and that's a challenge, so. Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, you know, 2019, we started off great, you know, so I mean, we take each game with, with a grain of salt and, you know, we got to finish strong. So I think that's the mindset going forward. Um, you know, whatever Coach Hart calls. <laughs> you know, whatever the defense has given us. So I think um, we made plays on the outside and on the inside. So, I mean, middle middle field closed, middle field open. We got certain plays for, designed for all three receivers and even tight end too, running backs too, you know. So that's the nice thing about our offense is any, any one of our skill positions can be involved in the passing game regardless of what they're giving us. So. Yeah, I mean, Sam has set that standard for not only us at wideout, but, you know, everyone else watching. So, I mean, Sam set the standard high, and, uh, you know, we try to go out there and do everything we can to, you know, help him reach that bar. Um, so, yeah. Um, in terms of what, what kind of media, like local, national, like, <laughs> um, I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't, I don't read too much in into into the media. Um, but you know, in our locker room, I can I can speak for that. And you know, Sam is what makes us go. So I mean, obviously, Sam has a high standard, and um, you know, and yeah. So I mean, each and every day, you know, it's just a it's just a pleasure, you know, to work with Sam and. You know, the attention to detail, his leadership, just everything that, that goes along with, you know, his preparation week in and week out. You know, it's just something that's really special to be a part of. And, you know, it's really cool. And um, it's honestly a, a really unique um, opportunity that a lot of people are, especially Sam, you know, just with, with the COVID, you know, the extra years of eligibility. Um, I think it's a really, really special um, accomplishment. You know, you look at Riley Skinner and what he did for the Deeks back in the day. Um, so, I mean, really cool. And I'm glad that not only myself, but our receiver room can be a part of that. Great. Thank you, guys. Go Deeks. <laughs>